Hi, this is Dave from Toot Cable. We're still working on conduit here, and I wanted to uh, show you a few things really quickly. Simple things could be things that you already know very well, but some of you may not, and this is for you. Right now, what we're going to do is we're going to join two pieces of conduit together in a union. We use uh, an accessory here called a union or a coupler. There are two types in main use. A set screw type, which uses these set screws to uh, make a positive connection to the pipe, to the conduit. And then there's the so-called compression type, which uh, uses a, a steel band inside that compresses around the outside of the uh, conduit in order to make a good electrical connection and uh, mechanical connection. So which type you use in most cases is uh, up to you. One thing that the compression type has going for it is that they uh, it makes a more positive seal, if you will. It's not a watertight seal, but almost. Maybe a splash-proof seal, if you will. The set screw type, not so much. Uh, there's always a little gap between the, uh, the uh, coupler and the piece of pipe where the set screw goes in, but it does make a, a positive ground connection, and that's good. I like these better. I, like I said, I think that they make a, a more positive connection. Also, they have higher symmetry, which uh, makes me feel like my life is in balance. So I choose these. Put on like this, on each end, and then tighten fittings. And then, this is one inch pipe. We're getting into some pretty large tools. You can use like a big pliers if you want. Uh, if you have a big enough adjustable wrench, whoa, that works. I use these. Even though they're small, they open up big and the jaws fit really well around even one inch connectors. So we'll tighten those like that and you have a connection. We're going to pretend like this tabletop is a wall surface, and we want our conduit to flush up against that wall surface. We also want our electrical box, our junction box, if you will, flush against the wall also, and we want our pipe to enter one of the knockouts here. So I'm going to pop out one of these knockouts. My habits come from when I was carrying a claw hammer, so that's how I do it. Knock it open with a claw hammer, pliers, or clines, or whatever you have. Pull that out, and there's a hole there now. But we see that this pipe is not going to fit that hole and stay against the wall because the bottom of this hole is not at the bottom of the box. So what you have to do is put an offset in the conduit. Take your tubing bender and your years of experience and you put a little offset in the pipe. Okay, I'm not going to show you how to do that because I'm not the greatest at doing it. All right, so we're about to install a couple of exterior video cameras. We're going to be running some Ethernet through some conduit horizontally. And I see we've started uh, bending our conduit here, but uh, what? That's what? My, that's my kink, Don. What the? Every, everybody has this kink. This kink is mine. Yeah, okay, yeah, I see it. it really? Well, I used to, anyway. Hired help. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, all right, well, we'll unkink it. What I do most of the time is I don't bend an offset into my pipe. I go to the store and buy an offset. Fits on with, a, in this case, a set screw. And now it fits. The star nut goes on next. Remember that each little 
piece in the connection has to be bonded together because this is a ground path. Star nut wrench, grab onto the star nut if you can, and just pull it around until those little little tines, I guess, those little tangs, bite in a little bit to the metal box, and so it's it's tight and it's not going to move. Put a plastic bushing on here so the cable's not abraded by the end of the pipe, and you're set. You can now use regular wall mount straps to hold this to the wall and still make it into the box. And now we're going to look at our one inch pipe. One inch pipe is what we normally use in commercial applications. And if you're using one inch pipe, which is noticeably bigger than the one inch, I mean, that half inch we were using a while ago, you need to make sure that you buy a box that has one inch knockouts. So we're going to uh, put this piece of one inch conduit into this larger box. So not knock out that big one inch knockout. All the way on, tighten it down. It may feel tight, but make sure it's tight because we're making a ground. And now that fits the box, but we still have our offset problem. You may be able to buy a one inch offset to do what we did before. If you are really big and strong, you can use a bender and put an offset bend into this. But usually what we do is we use what are called these uh, standoff uh, straps. They hold it at the right height to fit the box. Put the bushing on, on top of the star nut. And now, this nylon bushing will keep the cable jacket from being abraded while it's being pulled through this piece of conduit and into the box. In low voltage, we often have conduit that doesn't terminate in a box and the wire just comes out like next to a wireless access point for example. When you have a situation like that you still have to be wary of this edge and still have to protect your data cable. That takes this kind of bushing. So pop that little bushing onto the end and it's protected inside and outside now. Uh, your uh, cable jacket will be safe. So that's how you attach pieces of conduit together. That's how you attach pieces of conduit to junction boxes. And that's how you make sure that they fit the junction box. So uh, thanks for tuning in.